Demonstrations like this one in Barcelona are likely to become more frequent over the next few months as more and more people in Spain lose their jobs. There are too many people out of work, too many people living in poverty. With three and a half million people unemployed in Spain, the country has the highest unemployment rate in the EU. Now at 14%, some say it could reach 20% by the end of the year. Protesters say workers are paying too high a price for the economic crisis. Companies have shut their doors and left all of us workers out in the cold. Although Spain is suffering from the same financial crisis as the rest of the world, it's been compounded by the dramatic collapse of its credit fueled residential construction sector. Between 1998 and 2007, construction was responsible for a quarter of all new jobs, but it wasn't sustainable. There was a bubble. Uh, there were a lot of housing units that were built. They were being sold to a lot of foreigners. But uh, as the economies there started to change, people just didn't have the income. They just couldn't sell the number of housing units that were built. Now that the bubble has burst, many construction workers find themselves at the job centre. Among them is Jordi. The best I can hope for is a couple of months' work here and there, and then I'm back being unemployed, back looking for work. With hindsight, of course, something might have been done to avert such a collapse, but having the political will to do it at the time would have been tough. We should have stopped the, the boom in the, in the building industry and in the, in the, in the real estate. But the problem is was so, so good for the, apparently good for the Spanish economy. This meant the possibility of having houses for a lot of people, the possibility of high growth, especially for the immigrants, full employment, almost full employment with the standards of the Spanish economy. This was very positive. Another sector shedding jobs in Spain is the automotive industry, which contributes 5% of Spain's GDP. Domestic car sales plunged 48% in February. International components manufacturer Ficosa has had to lay off 400 workers worldwide. The most difficult thing for a businessman is to reduce the number of employees. It's something that we don't feel proud to make these restructurations. But you must do it in order to survive. But you should do this with intelligence, keeping talent in the company and keeping investments in innovation. Many companies believe that cutting costs by reducing payroll is what will keep them competitive. It's the positive side, if there can be one, of high unemployment. It's not good to have such high level of unemployment, but that shows that the companies are preparing themselves to weather the storm. And if you weather the storm much better, you will be stronger coming out of this crisis. I am very optimistic, not in the short term, Nevertheless, in the future, we have uh, good companies, very well managed. We are very open to other markets. I, I am confident. But whether you see the glass half full or half empty depends very much on where you stand. Certainly the protesters here are very pessimistic and are concerned for job losses now. And they want to see more protection from companies and governments. Workers cannot be made to pay for the crisis. When it's over, we want better life and working conditions, and that's why it's necessary for big business and government to make compromises and step up to their responsibilities. For its part, the national government has a number of measures in place to deal with the problem, including a $14 billion public works program aimed at creating 300,000 jobs. Meanwhile, the regional government in Catalonia wants to re-educate its workforce to reduce its reliance on low-skill construction jobs. What we have to learn from this crisis is that we have to move to a more value-added production model with better trained workers in sectors that generate high-quality jobs. It's training that people like Jordi will need if they're to find work in other more vibrant sectors such as renewable energy. But in the meantime, he's likely to be spending a lot more time in this job centre.